All right, this is part three, uh, last part to the three-part series of how to deploy cloud formation templates using Ansible. This is where we're actually going to deploy the template, right? So the first video was installing prerequisites, setting up our AWS credentials, and then pulling in the, the Git repo with the cloud formation template, the variables, and the playbook. Um, the second video was just me kind of go over going over the different, uh, you know, how the playbook works, how it interacts with the CloudFormation template, what the CloudFormation template does, and how that variables files tie into it. So this video is going to be we're going to change some of the variables, and then we're going to actually go ahead and we're going to run the playbook, and we're going to watch it uh, deploy these resources from the CloudFormation template, right? So when you pull in these files from the GitHub repo, um, you won't have to touch anything in uh, the CloudFormation template. You won't have to touch anything in the playbook unless you want to define a new host group for servers, and in which case you would have to define it here as well. You won't have to change these uh, because unless you're going to do some configuration afterwards, the host name doesn't matter. Um, all we're going to have to do is change some of these variables, right? So to start with, hosting infrastructure is going to be AWS. Uh, my region is going to be, let me see if I can pull this up uh, to the side here, make this easier, there we go, wow, all right, we'll just, there we go, okay, so yeah, uh, my region is going to be uh, US East 1, all right, or it could be US East 1, if you wanted to change that, I would just comment out the one I didn't want and uncomment the one I did want, right? Um, my environment ID, um, that's not defined in here. That's something I define on my own, right? So if I had like a test or and a production environment, those would be different environment names, right? Uh, my DNS domain, environmentid.com, right? Uh, in this case, it's going to be ansiblelab.com. My AWS image, what AMI do I want to use to launch these instances, right? Uh, and by the way, I'm using Linux Academy's uh, AWS Sandbox because I already pay $50 a month for Linux Academy. Um, I'm not going to be spinning up any resources in my own AWS and spending even any more money. Um, but everything works in the Linux Academy Sandbox. Uh, you can do everything you could do in a normal AWS account. None of these limitations affect cloud formation. There are some limitations in this in their sandbox, like you can only launch ten instances. You can only have a certain size uh, EBS volume, stuff like that. Um, but anyway, the AMI ID, right? So if I go over here to EC2 instances, and I launch a new instance, right? Uh, I believe I used a rel. I believe I'm using a rel seven six. AMI here, right? And this is my AMI ID, right? So you can see it matches the one here. Um, and that's where you get that. So depending on which AMI you want to use, you change that. AWS key name, right? It's the SSH key pair for our, our EC2 instances, right? So before I can launch these servers, I'm going to have to have that defined in AWS, right? So if I go to EC2 and go down as key pairs here, I can create a key pair. Uh, I'll do PEM. Uh, I'll name it key pair and create, create key pair, right? And I need a tag. Okay, so go ahead and create key pair, key pair, pen, do uh, name, key pair, create key pair. And it's created. So that's the key pair that CloudFormation is going to use. So let me change this key pair as the SSH key uh, to put into my authorized keys on my EC2 instances when it launches them. That way I can get into them once they're up. So I have to change that variable to match the key pair name I want to use. Uh, and then the AWS zone, US East 1 and US East, uh, East 1 A and B. All right. So then we'll go over to the server of ours, right? And I want to name my stack, uh, my servers, uh, AWS key name. Right, SSH key pair for the instances. Um, I believe I've double defined. Yeah, I, I double defined that. Um, so I'm actually going to go ahead and comment that out. Um, 
but if you want you can go ahead and get rid of it at all you can get rid of it here you can comment it out here or there it doesn't matter as long as you have one of them in one place and it has the name of an existing key in AWS you're fine uh, the server names right so I'm gonna have server name 01 and server name 02 uh, how the instance size right so if I go over to EC2 and I launch in running instances, I launch an instance, uh, and I'm just gonna pick one here because I want to show you the sizes. <clears throat> I have to pick a size here, like T2 micro, T2 small, T2 medium, something like that. <clears throat> and you just put it here as a string. Um, the subnet IDs, right? <clears throat> Those are important. Each uh, availability zone has its own subnet. So if I go over here in AWS and I go to VPC. Uh, and then I go to subnets. I have these different subnet IDs, right? Um, so, and they all correspond to a different uh, availability zone. So here's 1A and here's 1B. <clears throat> so I want 1A and 1B in this in this case, all right? So I'm gonna take the subnet ID for availability zone 1A. I'm gonna put it in there. And then this was availability zone 1B. I'm going to take a subnet ID for <clears throat> availability zone 1B. I'm going to put it in there. Um, EBS key, right? So this is the key if I want to encrypt my EBS volumes, which EBS key am I going to use, right? Uh, so if we go to uh, KMS, actually, and we go to AWS Manage Keys, uh, I have this key here with an alias of AWS slash EBS and that's the key I want to use to encrypt my EBS volumes and, all right uh, and then private hosted zone right so when my DNS uh, entries get created I'm gonna have to choose a DNS zone to put those in right and by default the Linux Academy they make me a public hosted zone right uh, but I want a private hosted zone right and I want to call it Ansible Lab. Uh, com. Make it a private zone. I'm associated with this existing VPC. I'm going to create. All right, so Ansible Lab.com has been created. So if we go back to hosted zones here, you'll see a hosted zone ID right here. And that's what I want for that variable there. I'm going to go ahead and replace that. Oh, I see that's why I use uh, Visual Studio Code. Makes editing this a heck of a lot easier. Okay. Uh, VPC ID, right? So if I go back over to VPC in AWS, I click on VPCs, I have a VPC ID. I'll go ahead and click that, copy paste. And it's in there and then you know uh, whatever you want to name your volume here so root volume it's going to be a gpg gp2 uh, and it's going to be 100 gigs uh, and the device name is going to be dev sda1 so i'm going to hit Control s in visual studio code and that's going to save this file for me i'm going to go ahead and save this one as well and now all my variables are set up so now i should be able to run this playbook with no problems so I actually had two issues when I tried to run the playbook that I should have verified before I even did that. Uh, I forgot a dependency in video one. I forgot to install python boto 3 um, So I'm going to go back in video one. I'm going to put a note in there so people know to install it. Um, but if you're hitting an error about boto core or boto not, not found, just go ahead and run the sudo apt install python boto 3 And the second error I hit was credentials could not be found right when the playbook tried to run and hit cloud formation cloud formation said it had no credentials and i was slightly confused because if i go uh if i go over to the uh aws directory i created and look at credentials um i had this in here it turns out in video one i told you guys to put aws underscore secret underscore key id to actually 
AWS underscore access underscore key ID. So if you get an error about credentials not found, just go back in here uh, and make sure you change this from secret to access. And I'm going to put the note in video one as well. Once you've got that all squared away, we're going to go ahead and run the playbook. So I'll do an Ansible dash playbook, tab to complete, dash I to define the inventory I would like to use. And I'm using the host inventory, host file, the path to the playbook I want to run. So playbooks. And then I only have one playbook here, so I'll hit tab, dot yaml, and I'll hit enter. Uh, and it's going to reach out to AWS. It's going to start provisioning uh, in AWS using CloudFormation. Um, you might get an error here in red. Uh, yeah, so this, um, I'm not sure why this is happening. This hasn't happened on a regular AWS environment for me. However, it does happen to me in the uh, Linux Academy lab. Um, already exists exception. Um, so normally that would say the stack already exists. Um, so if I go into CloudFormation, all right, um, the stack wasn't here. It, it just started, you know, when I ran the playbook, it kicked off the job and this stack then showed up as create in progress. It wasn't here already. I have no idea why this happens in Linux Academy. It's a sandbox. It could be an error of mine. I just don't know. Regardless, if you get this error, the playbook keeps running, you're fine. If you go in it, services, you go to CloudFormation, you'll see that the stack with the stack name I gave it has a create in progress. So if I click in here, I can see more fine grained detail, right? I can see the events, what's going on, right? It's creating these resources, what resources it finished creating, um, the parameters that I have inputted, right, in that uh, CloudFormation template. Here's the template that I use, right? Over here in, uh, whoa, whoa, okay, I have no idea what I just did. Anyway, uh, we'll come back when it's done running. All right, so we're back and the playbook is finished running. Um, and because the playbook was Design and running CloudFormation templates is designed for more of a dynamic inventory in Ansible. Um, you're going to see server two failed if you have more than one server defined in your host group, in your host file. Um, but if we look over here, once the playbook's done running, uh, the stack is created, right? It says create complete with green check arrow. That means really nothing went wrong. If we go over to our resources here now, and I'll go ahead and make this bigger. All my resources are built, right? My security group is built, server one, server one's DNS record, server two, and server two's DNS record. And this is the order in which they build too, because uh, like I said, in the CloudFormation template, it doesn't really matter what order you put things in, because CloudFormation is gonna know if, if there is a dependency, right? So it, it knew server one needed the Ansible security group to be created, so it created that first. So now if I go back into EC2 here, um, I see my running instances. Uh, and I have two terminated here. That's because I ran this CloudFormation stack earlier. Um, so those aren't there anymore. They're terminated. Um, but th they'll go away in a couple of minutes. Uh, I've got server one, all right? And server two, they've got the name, the server name that I gave them. Um, they all belong to their T2 mediums. They belong to, you know, here is subnet ID for, uh, Availability zone 1B. Here is subnet ID for availability zone uh, 1A. They've got uh, EBS volumes attached. Uh, let's go ahead and look at those, make sure they're encrypted like I wanted, right? Um, da -da -da, encrypted, right? We'll go back to EC2 instances. Um, what else are we looking for? You know, we're just kind of making sure everything looks good. We got our key pair we defined. Um, and if we go up to route 53, we should see our DNS entries here. So I'll go to my hosted zone, All right? And you can see server one and server two and their private IPs. And that's gonna, so it's gonna be the same way if you wanted to launch subnets or VPCs, right? You just have to build your cloud formation template like you normally would. And you just have to let me open it. You know, keep it 
somewhere where Ansible can reach it and define that, you know, in the playbook, you have to define the path to that CloudFormation template. You have to define all your parameters that you have in your CloudFormation template, all right? Image, any parameter you have in here, in your playbook underneath the CloudFormation module on Ansible. And really that's it. Uh, and, and, and define your variables for your parameters. Uh, so you can basically, you can take this and you can tweak this and you can use it in any way you want to launch any resources, uh, given that you have the permissions in AWS. And that's it. Thanks for watching.